Hi, I'm Phil Harbaugh, and this is my 25th video discussing the 1950s British science fiction paperbacks. In this video, I propose to talk about a short run series that offers some of the rarest and most interesting paperbacks of the Mushroom publishers. These publishers have been ignored and dismissed by most commentators. And as people who've seen my earlier videos will know, there's no bigger critic of them than I am. But, and this is important, I've always emphasised that not all of the 1950s Mushroom science fiction paperbacks were bad. Some were very good indeed. They are hidden gems and collectors should know about them. Now here we see five books in a short run series that I'm sure most uh, viewers will never have seen or even heard of. Hence, they will not be looking for them. And in turn, no rare book dealers are even trying to find them to fulfill the demand. The whole business becomes a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Here we see the five titles issued by Coombs and their companion imprint, Paladin Press, between December 1953 and the beginnings of 1954. Alien Life by E.C. Tubb, Venusian Adventure by Tubb, Zorani, subtitled Master of the Universe by Carl Morass, Peril from Space, and The Plant from Infinity, both by Carl Morass. Alien Life by E.C. Tubb is one of the author's finest titles as well as one of the rarest. It has a superb Ron Turner cover. A terrific suspense story it tells of a second space expedition to Pluto. The first exploratory ship had returned with only one crewman aboard, Carmadine, the commander. There's a profound mystery as to what had happened to the missing crew, as Carmadine is suffering from a mental block and is broken in health, almost insane. Medical treatment restores his health, but the amnesia as to exactly what happened on Pluto remains. Carmadine is then first to go back on a second expedition to Pluto to exercise his tortured memories of abandoning his crewmates to the terrors of Pluto's alien life. Tubbs' alien life forms could well have been subconsciously inspired by his reading of John Russell Fern's short story, Solar Assignment, which appeared in the first 1946 issue of New Worlds. This was also set on Pluto and has some plot similarities, but Tubbs' story is a completely different and much superior development and characterization, which is entirely his own. Reading Alien Life for the first time in, 19, in the 1950s, it made a tremendous impression on me. Many years later, in 1969, after I'd been hired by a new publisher to edit a line of science fiction novels, I remembered the story and commissioned Tubb to expand it, to bring it up to a longer length. That was required for the projected series. Tubb duly revised the story, adding 10,000 words, and the result was a first-class modern novel retaining all the sweep and excitement of his earlier book and nearly all of the original text, but with the now impossible Venusian jungle setting in the first chapter, transposed to the Brazilian Mato Grosso. I also commissioned art artist Eddie Jones to paint a cover for it. Unfortunately, for reasons which don't need to concern us here, the book series was postponed in favour of launching a new monthly science fiction magazine, Vision of Tomorrow, which I edited. Here we see the August 1970 issue of the magazine. It was nicely produced. You can see but I particularly want to draw your attention to the editorial announcement on page 65. And page 65. There it is. 
I decided to run Alien Life as a magazine's first serial. But it was not to be. Before it could be printed, the magazine was discontinued after it was decided to revert to publishing books as originally planned. But this too was aborted when I resigned my editorial position with the company following the ignominy of the publisher vetoing my opening choice of no less than four new John Wyndham books on which I'd managed to obtain an exclusive option. It was to be several years before I recovered from the mental anguish of this missed opportunity to carve out a career in publishing. The revised Alien Life seemed fated never to be published. Then, in the mid-1970s, in my capacity as a literary agent for the widow of John Russell Fern, I was asked by my Italian publishers to provide copies of his novels for translation in that country. One of the leading Italian editors, Antonio Bellomi of Milan, shared my enthusiasm for Tub. His republication of Fern became interspersed with reprints of Tubbs' 1950s novels from the copies I was pleased to supply. So I saw here the opportunity to finally bring into print Tubbs' revision of Alien Life. The manuscript for the revised Alien Life was duly airmailed to Milan, where it was scheduled to appear as novel number six of a series uh, entitled Spacio 2000. The novel was paid for and duly appeared in 1977 with a nice cover by Vision of Tomorrow artist Eddie Jones. But to my mortification, the publisher had not used the manuscript version, but simply translated the original and much shorter 1954 book, which I had earlier supplied, no doubt to save on his translation costs. But with my fan and collector's instinct, I'd kept a personal photocopy of Tubbs manuscript, hoping that somehow, someday, I'd be able to do it justice in an English edition. Sure enough, in 1977, soon after I'd become Tubbs' official agent, New York small press publisher Gary Levisi wrote asking me if I could suggest something special by E.C. Tubb for his ongoing science fiction detective series. Uh, uh, sorry, science fiction rediscovery series. Could I not just? This expanded and revised version of Alien Life was finally published by Griffin Books in January 1998 with an attractive newly commissioned cover by Ron Turner that illustrated the story perfectly. Turner was the same artist who painted the cover for the original 1954 edition. Unfortunately, not long afterwards, most of this book's small print run was destroyed by Hurricane Sandy when the publisher's home was flooded. However, I was able to restore the novel to print as a limited large print edition in the UK, revised by me to incorporate the latest astronomical data about Pluto and the uh, Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud under its new title of Journey into Terror, was published by Ulvis Croft in the Linford Mystery Series in 2009. Venusian Adventure was a rip-roaring interplanetary yarn in the author's best vein. His Venusian locale in this classic 1950s Jungle Planet book was teeming with strange creatures and parasitical fungi and giant scavenger beetles. The Venusian natives are exploited by terrestrial immigrants, many of them criminals dodging the penal code of other worlds. Hard-bitten adventurers are searching for the Golden Pyramid, a legendary alien Eldorado, including the hero Thorn and his partner. Thorn leads a successful expedition, but what they find is not as expected and complicated by human greed and cosmic revelations anticipating Von Daniken by decades. 
Its cover was by the very competent George Ratcliffe, who worked for the same art agency as Ron Turner, and so was sometimes called in to substitute for him when Turner was swamped by other paperback cover commissions. Apart from foreign translations and a much later and overlooked e-book edition, this rare book has never been reprinted. However, happily, I've been able to rectify this deplorable situation. The good news is that US publishers Wildside Press will very shortly be issuing both Alien Life as Journey into Terror, the new title, and Venusian Adventure in new paperback and ebook editions, as well as illustrated boards hardcover books, together with dozens of other tub books as well. Now, Carl Morass here was a house pseudonym. I claimed it found a, a new author there, but it, it was the usual mushroom publisher's trick of having a house name. And both Sorani and Peril from Space were both written by Kenneth Bulmer, but they were graced by dynamic Ron Turner covers. In the case of Peril from Space, the Turner cover is the most notable thing about it. Alas, this is one of Bulmer's weakest early novels, not up to his later standards. It was an unsuccessful attempt to create a futuristic detective. Arnold Denton is meant to be a cross between Philip Marlowe and James Bond, but comes across as a bit of a wimp. The science fiction elements are few and far between, and just used as ciphers. The story itself concerns a political struggle on the Jovian moons which have been colonised, but it's no more than a routine adventure story. Zorani is by far the better of Bulma's two stories for this publisher. The Zorani are a, mace, a race of mysterious alien invaders who've subjugated the Earth and most of the galaxy without ever having been seen. Only one man, Mallory, has glimpsed the invaders but has had his memory of them wiped after they'd extracted from his mind the information which enabled them to effect their conquest of Earth. Maori joins with a group of freedom fighters and the story builds nicely to an imaginative interstellar denouement that only the old science fiction hands would have seen coming. This book is a classic rare collectible. Now the remaining Karl Maris novel the Plan from Infinity was actually written by Peter Hawkins. Peter was a London-born fan turned author and a friend of Ted Tubb, who may well have alerted him to this book market and helped him to sell the novel. Hawkins was to publish only seven short stories, all for Car John Cornell's magazines New Worlds and Science Fantasy between 1952 and 1954. Here we see a profile of the author in this issue of New Worlds, which also contained his last published story, The Ship from the Stars. See here. And a nice Gerard Quinn script aboard illustration for it. But back to this the novel itself. The opening background and several of the characters are borrowed from Jack Williamson's classic novel, The Legion of Space, with a space academy and space marines. However, the story that is developed from it is highly original and realistically low key. The title describes an alien seed spores which drift into the solar system and take root on all the planets, many of which have been terraformed. However, this book was to be Hawkins' only novel. This was a pity, as his book was quite an interesting one. This unjustly overlooked novel is extremely well written and enhanced with a quite superb Turner cover painting. This very collectible book is perhaps the rarest of all the five books here. I hope this video may prompt some of you to extend yourselves to try and find and read this short-run forgotten series. 
I wish you good luck with that. You're going to need it. These books are rare.